Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy, and today we'll take a look at the top seven features so far on Android 15, along with several honorable mentions. So currently, Android 15 is still a part of the beta process. We now are on beta 2.1. Now, Android 15 beta 2 introduced several new features. That was released on May 15th, and beta 2.1 was just small little fixes, and that was pushed off on May 20th. Now, this video is of the top seven brand new features of Android 15. This is just my personal list of the top seven, along with honorable mentions. So first off, we will start with some security and privacy when it comes down to connecting to Wi-Fi networks. So right here, once you go inside of your settings, this is where you see your network and internet. And then you go inside of the internet connections. And inside of here, this is where you see all of the available Wi-Fi's you're able to connect to. And let's say that you are connected to one that is not your personal Wi-Fi. Maybe you're at Panera or some other public location. What you can do is once you are connected with them, you tap on that little settings dial. And with the settings dial, you can go right here to privacy and then you can turn this off. And what this is doing is you are not sharing your device name. So originally and always, anytime you connected to any Wi-Fi network, anytime you connected, you're basically sending your device's name so people know who and what is connected. Now you can actually turn it off for a little bit more privacy. So this way you don't have to share this device's name with the network. As you can tell out of the box, this one is turned on. And then from here, we're gonna go back just a couple pages because I'm gonna merge these two together as the very first feature. Now, as you scroll on down, you'll be able to see network preferences. With network preferences, you have this option right here, which is allow WEP networks. And this is pretty much on any other smartphone out there. You can actually deactivate this because now what's happening is WEP is a older security protocol that is less secure. So if you do not want to connect to a less secure Wi-Fi, something that's of a older technology, you're now able to turn this off. So when you have this one toggled on, you are allowing WEP networks, which WEP networks here, again, is that older security protocol. If you'd like to keep it all brand new and more secure, just toggle that off. Feature number two is taking a look at the brand new user interface of the volume menu. So when you take a look at this menu, it looks quite a bit different. I think it looks way better. So if you hit the volume up or down and then you expand it, this is where you can just go through. You can tap anywhere you want to, you know, in this area, you can either swipe them left and right, or you can just simply tap the screen. You can go all the way to the right, all the way to the left. However, you'd want any of these, these sound settings to be, you're able to get it done that way. Also, you can either bring it up or down. So if you want it to be fully expanded, you can have it expanded. Or if you like it to be a little bit more minimalistic, a little bit smaller, you can do that as well. You can also have your live caption option here. Here's your settings for anything audio. And then you can also hit on done. And then don't forget about this icon on the very top right hand side, which right now it just shows the phone, which is where the audio would be playing out of. If you do want to switch it over into a Bluetooth speaker, you can do that. And then that icon will switch as well. So this is the brand new user interface for your entire volume settings. Feature number three is one where we just did a full in-depth comparison versus Samsung secure folder, and that is Google's brand new private space. So if you'd like to see the full in-depth comparison, I'll place that link below this video inside the description and you can watch that video next. But that was where we compared Samsung's secure folder, which has been around for seven years, versus Google's private space, which has been around for about a week. This is where you can pretty much have a separate side of your phone, maybe a personal side, and then a business side. So how you're first able to get it activated is you wanna go inside of your settings. And once you go inside of here, you're gonna scroll down and you take a look at security and privacy. And then inside of security and privacy, this is where you find private space. So this is where you activate it, you turn it on, you put in your pin or password or fingerprint, and it's always showing up on the bottom of your application tray. So once you go inside of here, this is where you can get it unlocked, and then you can download applications from the Play Store. So this way, either you can have it as like a business side of things, maybe your banking applications or your financial applications, or maybe you kind of are a little bit like me where you would like to have several different profiles for a game. So this way on the normal personal side of your phone, you can go inside and you can play these games like, you know, Pokemon Go or or Whiteout or uh, Toon Blast or whatever the case. And then if you'd like to have a second account, you can just put it right here rather than logging in, logging out, logging in, logging out and switching between the two. So anything that's in this private space is locked right here. It's not on the personal side. So anything that you, you take a picture of or that you have in this area, any applications that's sitting here, 
here is not a part of the personal side. And then you have a bunch of different little settings inside of here. So you can take a look at the settings if you'd like to take a look at it. And then if you'd like to get it locked, you can tap the lock button and you'd have to unlock it again to go inside of your private space. Feature number four, this is one that I really wish would move over onto the Samsung side of things. I think that Google did it much better here. And that is when you do a screen recording. Anytime that you hit on screen record, it captures everything, anything and everything that you do. If you go inside of your notifications panel sometimes, if you go into other applications, you're really only trying to show one app. And that is why you have the option for single app. So what'll happen is when you are recording, which you can either do it with the device audio, with your microphone, or both at the same time, pretty much when you're recording a application, what'll happen is once you hit on start recording, if you were to get out of the application, it will not record. So as you are selecting which application you will be doing, so let's say that I wanted to do a video only on whiteout, then once I go in here and I hit on record, if I was to get out for a second, write back to somebody else through a text message, go back to the game, me messaging someone else does not show up in the video. That video actually pauses and then restarts its recording again from a pause point. So it'll basically pause one frame before you leave the application and then starts up again once you're back in. So I can get in and out of an application multiple times in a screen record. And the only thing it's recording is that single application I told it to only record. Feature number five is one that I think is very clever. It's a way that you're able to save space on your phone when you want to, or at least just take a break from an application. But at any point in time, you can get it going all over again, get it restarted without having to do all of your login info. So what you can do is you can archive an application. So let's say maybe you wanna take a break from Facebook and Instagram and also Twitter. So what you can do from here is when you go inside of the app info, you can archive it. Now what's happening is it is basically essentially deleting the application from your phone, but storing all of your login info. So what'll happen is the next time that you would want to go into Facebook, cause maybe you wanted to take a break, but you don't want to fully uninstall and then re-put in all your login info, or you want to save space on your device for some reason, this is where you can just re-tap back on that icon. It's going to reinstall it for you just right from there. And then once it installs, you can go right back in as if you basically did absolutely nothing. You can tap on the application and you're already logged in exactly where you left off. Feature number six, we'll take a look at widgets. Now, what they were able to do in widgets is something that I'm surprised took so long. But if you remember going through all of the widgets on a Google Pixel device, they were all in a single file line. So it would take you forever just to take a look at five or six different things. But now what they were able to do was actually double them up so this way you wouldn't have to scroll as much. So here we are taking a look at five different widgets and they're all gonna be sitting right next to each other. So you can see that these two are together, these two are together, and what it looked like beforehand, let's say in Android 14 and before, this one would be stacked here, this one would be down here, this would be here, and then this one would be on the bottom. So you have to actually scroll the entire screen just to see these four, and now you'd be able to see all of them in one spot. And since we're a part of the widget screen here, there's one thing I wanna show you really fast. A lot of times you try to find the weather widget because maybe you wanna change it or switch it out or whatever. It's not gonna be down here underneath weather. It was rebranded over into pixel weather. And then lastly on this list, there is a brand new option inside of your wallpaper paper and style. And this one is for color contrast. So when you take a look at some of your quick settings on the top or some of the notifications that come through by default, it's just sitting on default and you can kind of see slight differences when you're to switch between these. Also this little icon over here, this is your little edit button. You'll find it if you do, you know, let's say a screenshot or whatever. This is where you can take a look at the default the medium as well as high. And you can definitely see the difference when you go through everything, especially if a notification was to come through, you'll be able to see the difference between these three different options. And then lastly, on the screen, you have this option right here below those three options where it is maximize text contrast. So if you'd like to put a little bit of a white or black background behind whatever you're looking at, it'll give you a really good contrast. Again, this is probably the maximum contrast you really can. If you have white lettering, or white numbers, you'll have a black background behind it. And here, if it's black lettering, you have the white behind that. 
And now for the honorable mentions, this one I can't show off personally, but I did find a GIF of it talking about the brand's new feature, and that is the theft protection. So it uses the accelerometers and the gyroscope to notice that if you're using your phone and it's unlocked, you're reading whatever it is, if it notices that it gets snatched and pulled away super quickly, it will actually just lock the phone for you because there was a possible theft detection. So this way it'll lock your phone and then the thief will not be able to use your phone. Now, along with that theft protection, you also have satellite connectivity so this way you're not only using it for emergency phone calls, you can use it for SMS, MMS, and RCS. You also have multitasking, it has been improved on larger screens, so the Pixel Tablet and the Pixel Fold. The Google Wallet takes all card types, so rather than just only debit cards and credit cards, if, if let's say you have membership cards, it can take those as well. You also have Predictive Back, which is now a part of regular Android 15. It's not inside of developer options anymore. So basically when you go inside of all these different menus, as you are swiping back to go back a page, you'll be able to see slightly the next page that you're going to. My hope is that they'll be able to refine it and make it to where the screen shrinks a little bit more so you can see exactly which screen you are about to go to a little bit better. And then also you have smoother picture in picture. So when you're watching YouTube and you swipe up to basically go back to the home page, then what'll happen is the transition in the animation of going from the big video to the small video has been significantly improved and much more smooth. And don't make fun of my handwriting. That's what I do if I'm just trying to write some stuff down real quick. But hopefully you guys appreciated this video and you found it to be helpful. Let me know what your guys' favorite feature is so far of Android 15. If you guys appreciated this video, you liked the video and you learned something, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's right over here on the very bottom left-hand side. It's free to subscribe. And also if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.